As Christmas approaches, let us with great joy and excitement prepare ourselves tonight to hear again the message of the angels. Let us go to Bethlehem and see this great event and the baby lying in a manger. Let us read again the scriptures, the story of the loving purposes of God from the first days of disobedience to the glorious redemption brought to us by this child. And let us fill this church tonight with our songs and carols of praise. Let us pray too for the needs of the world, for peace on earth and unity. Let us remember in his name the poor and the helpless, the cold, the hungry and the oppressed, the sick and the sad, the lonely and the unloved, the old and the very young. Let us offer up these prayers and praises to the throne of heaven in the words that we sing and the thoughts that we have. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of deep darkness. A light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as soldiers rejoice when dividing the plunder. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of of peace, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. In that last reading, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. You know, darkness is a reality for many people in their lives. It's a reality for those, uh, those families in the community in Newtown, Connecticut, for the 20 children and six teachers and a mother who were gunned down by that gunman. There's darkness in that community. There's darkness in war-torn places around the world, in Syria, in Congo, in Sudan, in places like North Korea where there's oppression. Even here in Shadwell, there's darkness in people's lives. This is the number one highest, um, highest rate of child poverty in the country. So for those families, there can be darkness. And there's darkness on the inside as well, a bit more hidden from view. Mother Teresa said the most terrible poverty is loneliness and the feeling of being unloved. Macbeth sums up the darkness of hopelessness when he said famously, life is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. And Woody Allen, who can always be called on at these moments, more than any other time in history, mankind faces a crossroads. One path leads to despair and utter hopelessness, the other to total extinction. Let us pray we have the wisdom to choose correctly. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. This is one of the messianic prophecies in the Bible. There are 323 of them. They were written over 400 years before Christ. And they tell a message looking forwards, helping people to identify or helping God to know that he identifies with their darkness. The people walking in darkness, whether it's external circumstances or an inner darkness but have seen a great light. 
God offers hope. It is an answer from God. This prophecy, one amongst many, is a mystery about God. It's a mystery as we look forwards from that moment that God is going to give a gift to this world to help them to find the light. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. God offers a gift. What do you think this gift will be? This gift from God in over 323 prophecies in the Bible is of a child. God says that all the answers to all the cries in the darkness can be found in the gift of a child. For to us a child is given. To us a child, a son is born. Could this gift be the answer to the darkness all around the world? To the darkness in the human heart? This child that was born 2,000 years ago. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. 
And coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary. And they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been, bought, been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Let us pray for the world. God, we thank you for our world. At this time, Lord, we pray for the families who have lost loved ones in the school shooting in Connecticut. We pray that you would be with them all and let them know your love and peace. We pray for peace around the world and we pray that you would bring reconciliation to people and countries. In Jesus' name, amen. And now we pray for our area, Shadwell. Lord, we pray for those in this area. We pray for night shelter. We thank you for the protection and the provision that it provides. Keep those living on the streets safe this Christmas. In Jesus' name, amen. Finally, Lord, we pray for ourselves. Thank you for bringing us, help, for bringing us hope. Help us to know that you are with us. Bless our time with friends and family. May we bring your light and your love to others this Christmas time. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus, God's son, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, making peace through the blood of his cross. He will be called Emmanuel, God with us. When we were decorating the church, we were putting up that banner, Hope is Here, and unfortunately, a few of the letters fell off. So we lost the P and we lost the RE at the end of um, here. And the first thing we thought was, who is he? You see that? Just, who is he? And do you know something? That is probably the most profound question you can ask. It is the, the question of Christmas. Who is this child? Probably more critical than what's, whether you're going to get a, a turkey leg or not, whether you're going to get a PlayStation, that darling pair of shoes, a mini iPad, whatever it is. What if God was one of us. Those readings describe Jesus as creator, as the pre-existent one, as the sustainer of all things, as omniscient, able to see everything, omnipotent, all-powerful, holding all things together. It calls for us to imagine collapsing the whole of God himself into that cradle. Like a skyscraper fitting itself into a matchbox. 
making himself vulnerable to us in the blood and the sweat and the pain of the birth process. In the filth of a stable. As he lived in a carpenter's shop, in a succession of peasant villages under a Roman sky, in one of the most controversial countries on earth. Has anyone else lived a life like Jesus? Taught as he taught? Performed the miracles that he is said to have done? What if he really made God discoverable? Revealed him in the disposable clothing of flesh and blood? What if he came as a baby, to attract us, and not as a galactic superpower to impress us or overwhelm us, because that's the kind of God he is, a kind God. What if he lived with the knowledge that one day would come a time when he would have to walk right into the eye of the storm? allowing himself to be stretched out on an agony of unforgiving wood? What if he chose to enter into our death, not because he was a fool or a martyr or a hero, but because by doing so, he knew that he could draw the sting of death itself? What if death could not hold him and he was raised from the dead? Does this not mean that he is the possessor of all the answers? That he is the Lord of life? Making other theories about him just way too small. Christmas That word means Christ's time, Christmas. And this is the moment when in awe and wonder, we gaze on this baby and acknowledge that hope is here. That hope can be received that hope can be found in a deep, profound relationship with God that's possible through him because he is God with us. When we realize this, this is the most important thing the world could ever hear. When I realize this thing, it is the most important thing that I will ever hear in the whole of my life. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. For to us, a child is born, a son is given, and he will be called Emmanuel. God with us. Where is hope? Hope is here. In Jesus. The choir is going to sing a song. And let this song speak to you. Allow God to speak to you through this song. And then I'm going to pray afterwards. You're the one our hearts hunger for. Where is hope? How are you going to respond to that question this Christmas time? Might be that you know this hope personally. You've received him. And you can glorify him with the angels this Christmas. And that's a wonderful thing. Let me encourage you to do that. Take the time this Christmas to step aside and say, glory to you, God, for this amazing thing that you've done. 
There might be others who are just beginning to think, well, you know, I realize that hope might be found in him. And if that's you, um, like many others before, like the shepherds who went searching for Jesus, actually, we offer a course called Alpha. It's done in over 6,000 churches around the UK. And we'd love to invite you to do this course as well. It's a course exploring the meaning of life. Being able to explore particularly those questions about Jesus. And we encourage people to ask any question they like. Um, we're going to give you an invitation to that course on the way out. And if you've done the course, why not give it to someone else? But we found that something like, um, I think there's a statistic that something that says something like 4 million people have already said in a Mori poll that they would go to Alpha if they were invited. So if you'd like to come and you haven't done it, come and invite someone else in the country. That's something like one in four or, or more who would love to come to the course just to explore this hope. But there might be someone who's um, just saying tonight, you know, I can't wait till the course starts in the new year. I want, to, I want to receive this hope now. And for that person and for all of us, I'm going to encourage us to bow our heads to pray. And um, let's pray this, echoing this in our own hearts. But perhaps for the one or um, two people who would like to say yes to this hope today. Here's a prayer you can echo in your heart. Don't say it out loud, just um, after me in your heart. Lord Jesus Christ, I'm sorry for the things I've done wrong. Please forgive me. I turn from everything that I know to be wrong and turn towards you. Thank you that you died on the cross for me so that I could be forgiven and set free. Thank you that you offer me forgiveness and the gift of your spirit. I now receive that gift. Please come into my life by your Holy Spirit to be with me forever. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Just a short prayer. Lord, thank you for any who prayed that prayer. And thank you for each one of us who can celebrate your presence with us. Hope is here. Come and ignite that thought, that um, word in our hearts this Christmas. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to just um, have a pause and we're going to watch SPS News now. This is our um, newsreel, which uh, just tells you what's going on in the life of the church. So do watch this. Let us pray. May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and all for whom you pray, now and always. Amen. Thank you for coming. Have a very happy Christmas, and please do stay for refreshments. It's great to have you here.